to fmri very mobility resistance to webinar uh, is the last one for the march um, we are uh, the honored to have dr dimitriou and his team from democritus university of track in greece that they are presenting a, a part of their research work to our a seminar series if they are okay i think we can uh, record and forward to the usdot and also you can see the the recording on youtube video on our website uh, it's a very long uh, bios and achievement from the group but i will try to be uh, briefly so dr dimitriou uh, Educational background includes PhD in forecasting, in demand forecasting, transportation, master degree in planning and management, uh, and diploma uh, equivalent to four years BA and one year master in civil engineering, transportation planning. He has more than 20 years professional experience, uh, share on, on uh, different pillars of activities, educational research and management. A huge amount of uh, journal publications and uh, various awards. Dr. Maria Sazetaki is another speaker today. Uh, she has a PhD in University of Thraki, Greece, Master of Science from Cranfield University and, uh, and Master of Science from Aristotelian University of Saloniki and uh, Diploma uh, in Engineering from the Democritian University. She's an assistant professor for management uh, in the Department of Economics at Democritius. She has publications. Uh, her professional track record includes the occupation of secretary advisory position in, in large enterprise organizations. In 2019, she was the winner of the Professional Achievement Award of the study United, United Kingdom Alumni Award awarded by the British Council in Greece. And Dr. Aristi Karaguni, uh, she has her degree from the Democritus University of Thraki in economics. And uh, she's very active in research uh, as, as a postdoctor researcher now in the Department of Economics at the same university in the field of sustainable development and management infrastructure. She was participating in more than 50 uh, journal publications, the high impact uh, factor journals and, and uh, workshops and professional presentations. Uh, she participates in the organizing committee of the international conference that held every three years on intermodal transport innovation in planning management, business development and decision making, probably in the North Greece. So, Dimitri, the floor is yours. Thank you again for this opportunity. You are giving different flavor in uh, our research, not only at the Florida Atlantic University, but also in the state of Florida. And uh, again, uh, from my bottom of my heart, thank you for your uh, time and effort. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Kaiser. I think that uh, we have 35 participants in our meeting, so I think that the topic stimulates somehow the interest of the audience. I realize that uh, obviously it will be something different from the regular uh, uh, material that you are uh, dealing with in the department. But I think that we try hard in order to present you in an hour, in less than an hour, a coherent approach about the managerial aspirations that is also critical when we discuss about planning issues and especially regarding strategic planning and business planning that is part of our business. So I prefer Dr. Karaguni to share the, your screen, share your uh, slides in order to be ready for your part of presentation. So measuring performance in transportation. Here we will discuss about how the business react on that. And uh, because uh, most of the decisions are heavily dependent on the impact in the business and the business ecosystem as in general, this is critical to understand the key aspect of, of how we measuring performance. So the first slide is the introduction. The second slide is uh, that we present you 
our bios. Already Professor Kaiser present us uh, somehow the team of uh, established in the Democratic University of Thrace in the Department of Economics. We have an extended research background because we have many programs that we are involved in. And also we have uh, recently we have the Nairist Plus that is uh, one of the logos that you see in many slides where we evaluate and develop uh, digital platforms for supporting the decision making in transportation sector mainly regarding strategic business and uh, strategic and business planning but also regarding efficiency and productivity um, that is very key, that is very useful elements to support decisions uh, in corporate environment so the next slide is to give you the outline of this presentation you can see that we have some uh, core uh, three main areas that we try to discuss today we organize our presentation in that three areas and we split the presentation to the speakers according to that uh, let's say outline first of all i will try to give you an overview about corporate business environment and the changes that take place in the transportation sector in the second part we will try to to, to explain you how we evaluate the challenges and uh, let's say we use the output of our analysis in order to, to, to support decisions in terms of investment, but also in terms of commitments to the clients, to their shareholders, to our stakeholders as well. And the, th the last part will be case studies and uh, give you some, uh, let's say, conclusions regarding uh, the, what we expect today, what is the performance of today, to what are the expectations of tomorrow in transportation sector, and exactly and we have we give ex examples globally, but also we focus in Europe. Provide to you some comparisons between Europe and US that I think also it's critical for you. It's crucial for you in order to have a more global view of our business of transportation business. So in the next slide, it's the fourth slide that we try to try to see how the systems of in uh, how the sector of transportation and enterprises in transportation are organized. First of all, in early 90s, up to 90s, the majority of the activities in transportation sectors, it was under the government, under the control of governments. That means that uh, the transportation uh, enterprises uh, are, are government units in the majority of them, in urban, but all, as well in the interurban environment, providing focus of their activities in the, to deliver transportation services. This means that the majority of our, their revenues became from uh, fares, became from tickets. Came, the revenues came from a tra uh, directly from transport activities, from services that provide to the clients. And uh, in the urban environment, as some penalties as well. Gradually, they try to extend their business using the benefits of the ground, of the population that they are serving or the clients that they are serving. So advertising and commercial activities and the real estate as well are taking place, taking some, uh, achieving the transportation and the prices, some revenues from that type of activities. Gradually again, as the environment, the business environment of in transportation system starts to be more liberalized, start to use uh, let's say, activities or use actions uh, that gain revenues from uh, financing things, from uh, use of um, uh, lands and uh, portfolio, asset portfolio management, from shopping and trade activities, from other non-transport activities like insurance, like visa, like promoting uh, loyalties to their clients and take some benefits from trade and so on but as well to be energy producers and the info uh, developers or info distributors uh, to greater audience because of the, the access that they have in the clients and the passengers. So the, the, let's say will be there, there, there is also information. It was a generator for revenues for the incorporate level. Additionally, recently, we have also data management that is also, at least if you put your button and one more, you can see that we see the last box. 
so data, the use of data and the economy of data is starting to take place and generate revenues. So the non-transport activities lead to a different corporate uh, to lead to corporate uh, transformations uh, in the in the structure of the business of a typical uh, transport enterprise and data use and use of data and data economy act to them as an elevator in order to discuss about the digital transformation of the business and taking the benefits of this digital era. So today in 2020s and now on, we have a totally, totally different view in their revenues, shares, when we speak about transport enterprises. When the when in 90s, 85%, close to 85% or the majority of revenues became from transport activities today 50 or more more than 50 percent became from non-transport activities that means that uh, the transportation and the prices have to deal with revenue generators came from other sectors of activity from other type of activities and uh, there is a huge transformation regarding the structure regarding the orientation regarding the business plan reg reg uh, regarding the investment priorities that have to implement it in uh, their business plan in the forthcoming years. Next slide, in the next slide, you can see that uh, the orientation regarding the, the utility to deliver business and the suppliers to performance in terms of delivering that business is also totally changed. So, the outsourcing approach for activities and, and partnerships for, with other players in, uh, in especially in non-transport uh, and revenues uh, generators and revenues pillars that came from uh, non-transport activities taken place. So some factions like uh, uh, marketing or branding or uh, real estate are actions that uh, deal with outsourcing activities and uh, this is because uh, major uh, transportation enterprises shift their strategy in order to have uh, collaborations, partnerships with uh, key players, keep, keep other enterprises in other sectors that have a leading role and in order to take the benefits and generate more revenues to them. So today, in the, you can see, for instance, in the next slide that we can give you an example of uh, a typical airline uh, air carrier and a typical airport. Uh, th there you can see that uh, ticketing or, uh, for instance, everything regarding the box of in the business in the intelligence, like marketing, branding, revenues, collecting revenues from the clients and all of these activities, it's strongly move to outsourcing uh, for an air carrier. So you can see there that uh, big uh, databases or uh, traders taking place in that uh, part of the business for an, an airline. While on the other hand, uh, fleet management and uh, crew management, especially regarding pilots, taking under the control of insourcing of uh, an uh, air carrier. Uh, while on the other hand, uh, the management of fuels or the maintenance is also an activity uh, shifting between sourcing and outsourcing according to their business model that they are using. Just to, to, to remind you and highlight you that uh, on that scheme there, on that uh, diagram that you can see, uh, the, the, the implementation or the, the, the phenomenon of low cost carriers that taking place in the air transport industry shifting totally the, 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 the atmosphere in corporate environment uh, for, uh, for an air carrier where more and more activities outsourced from uh, the air carriers in order to gain lower cost or to gaining more synergies with uh, other uh, actors in the market and take benefits for them and mitigate also the business risks. The second diagram, you can see a typical airport, an international airport, where you can see that uh, typically uh, administration is something that is also strongly affected the insourcing approach for that type of corporate business. 
On the other side, you can see that land side activities and the where land side activities a strong generator of revenues for airports, like parkings, like accommodation, like use of land or real estate in their territory. There is there is activities that um, are outsourcing and airports make contracts and partnerships with uh, players in order uh, with others with hoteliers or with uh, uh, parking enterprises in order to gain to gain let's say more revenues and that and the, and the challenge of today is to evaluate on that if that partnership if that contracts are are beneficial for both sides so in sourcing and outsourcing and the, the, what, what what are the actions and what are the items for outsourcing it's a critical charger, a challenge for today and the investments and the uh, that are um, lead, are related to that activities for instance the investments in parking in, for an airport the investments in marketing for a carrier it's something that uh, um, something that uh, lead to lead to actions and the investments in collaboration with external to the business, to transport business and this is something to deal with in other terms in more economic terms this is a leverage of uh, uh, capitals that uh, the transport sector taking the benefits of that one in order to avoid the risks mitigate the risk and also to avoid unnecessary investments and take more revenue so this is the issue behind so the uh, while to yesterday while uh, let's say the the the, the uh, impact of a transport enterprise uh, in the in, in a regional business ecosystem it was mainly regarding the employees and the suppliers uh, for that enterprise today the spillover effects of that enterprise because of outsourcing activities is huge and extended to many sectors in other words the multiplier for that for a transport enterprise it's much much higher today and expected to be much much higher in the future rather in the past you can see here uh, there i give you and uh, i give you some uh, key references in order to see more details for people that they are wants to investigate it more deeply that subject. So in the next slide, we have now to see that uh, carriers digitalization concepts and the performance behind that it's regarding how quick, how well, what is the added value that generated from the digital transformation so this is a key output. So when we speak about performance and the performance regarding the digitalization for a transport enterprise, the added value created behind that, the added value created to the business ecosystem is a crucial measure to evaluate performance. The digital effectiveness, and here is how quick, how more productive is the process. So there is a lot of discussions about uh, centralized and decentralized uh, checking activities for instance at airports or uh, mobility ticketing or other type or uh, other ways in order to avoid the cost and mitigate uh, let's say the, the the level of risk in terms of fare collection uh, that is something that is dealing with for instance in the motorways it is a lot of discussion about the uh, the direct payment uh, by the um, when in the tolling system uh, or the free, or the free, free flow uh, concept behind that that it's uh, very very crucial and very very difficult to affect it in other uh, countries US, US it's a step behind on that but in Europe and there's yet a lot a lot of steps um, that have to that have to do it in order to to, to be, let's say, in a free, free flow uh, motorway approach. Uh, that means that uh, digital effectiveness is something critical in order to measure, measure performance, especially for transport networks. Digital e efficiency is also something very important related mainly to measures of regarding operational e efficiency and the um, ways in order to be to improve the level of quality, the level of service, and the level of safety and security. This is more or less the effective the efficiencies regarding digital transformation. 
digital replacement, it's also something crucial because you understand that for transplant enterprises, uh, as well uh, for um, the majority of the enterprises, uh, the, the, the cost of uh, the labor cost is something that we ha they have to deal with. So you understand that the replacement of the working places, the replacement of activities in order to avoid additional labor cost or uh, asset cost, it's something that, or investment cost, it's something that uh, have to deal with. In, in more economic ways, the effectiveness the, 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 the benefits of digitalization in terms of operational expenses, OPEX, in the terms of investment expenses, CAPEX is something that we have to evaluate. So, business as usual is not a scenario that uh, the, the, the digital transformation means always a step forward regarding innovation to, to find and adopt ways in order to take the benefits of digital implementation in the business so in other words in other words uh, all the business plan have to to explain and support uh, actions in order to compare it with the business as usual scenario and the present the improvements in order to support it in uh, their business plan in financing by banks or by shareholders or whatever so this is also something crucial to deal, to deal with and all the business plans that you can see that is uploaded in the websites or uh, in other sources for transfer the prices compare uh, outputs, compare estimations regarding the implementation in uh, digital uh, applications and approaches in order to reduce cost and mitigate and improve uh, level of quality and services and uh, compared with the business as usual scenario. And uh, this change have to, and also regarding sustainability as well, regarding the environmental protection. So it's something that we have to, 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 to see, to, we see very often, and you can see in many reports very often, that speaking about performance in a transport of prices, the comparison with the business as usual scenario is the baseline of such type of measuring performance. And in the next slide, You can see here that uh, data, sorry, the data management it, and uh, data management is something that also is very crucial. You can you can imagine that uh, usually a typical transport the price uh, uh, take into consideration all of their that uh, many of data regarding the uh, clients. A client is uh, the suppliers, but client is also the passengers or the cargo. Uh, consumer or the cargo, cargo, let's say delivery, uh, uh, whatever this this car cargo radiation. So data management is something very crucial, and the and the use of data. Speaking about the economy, it's also very crucial because generally there is a revenue generator. So a typical architecture in order to see how the system it works is presented in this triangle in the scheme where you can see that uh, from the typical database that we have in the past, now we move on to decision support tools that is uh, important in order to provide decision, decision support decisions uh, in, a, in a corporate level, but uh, as well in a shareholder level. So, uh, so we have, uh, and the performance assessment on that is something that we have to deal with in all levels of this architecture of a, a such type of database. In other words, while the, the, all the carriers, all the, the, the task from the operations have to have a database regarding their clients and all their activity, however, uh, the performance assessment that needs evaluation regarding their performance have to also to be storage and also to be ready to disseminate for in, to, the, to the persons that have to have access on that and also uh, scenarios regarding the improvements in the future is something also metadata if you wish in that type of metadata have to be also support decisions so that is crucial on that and so the, the the development of databases inside the uh, the, the, the transport enterprises have such that type of uh, scheme where uh, modeling tools in order to assess uh, performance is something crucial and this is our discussion but also assessment tool is totally different assessment tool have to have to develop uh, 
ε, με τα data scenarios in order to support decisions because you know very well, especially during the COVID-19 crisis, the, 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 the time of decision is crucial in order to avoid costs. The time of decision is crucial and the flexibility related to the data uh, and the accuracy of the data that you have in order to be flexible and meet the targets or the risks that you have ahead. So the prices, transport the prices recognize that. So they try to develop such type of schemes, such, such type of platforms in order to support that. And believe me that that type of platform sometimes is, is very expensive and the carriers that they have the experience and they are ahead, the, 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 the impact of the such type of organizational environment inside the enterprise uh, is crucial and uh, reacted to added value for, for the shareholders. So the differentiation or let's say the the, the, different, the, 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 the company that uh, performed well related as well as uh, with the type or the orientation of that they adopted in order to organize their data. And this is something also very crucial for them. And in the next slide, you can see that the new concepts speak about integration of such type of systems and smart cities or uh, uh, mobility as a service are concepts, concepts that are adopted in order to integrate different systems, to integrate different transport operators and transport places, taking the benefits of Internet of, of Things technology, providing services direct to the clients, and support the decisions direct to the clients uh, and also to support them regarding data management and speaking about data management including asset management that is a very 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 important uh, item uh, especially for transport enterprises that are uh, managing uh, infrastructures like airports, ports or motorways and finally the society has to deliver uh, tools and uh, information and uh, uh, to, to develop the right atmosphere uh, where the multiplier to the local ecosystem should be high. Just to explain, to give you an example of that, uh, for instance, in a European city, in uh, close to 2020, when, the, this, when an organize, a transport enterprise opened the data to the market, in other words, in other words, provide free to the market data about uh, the consumer's um, preferences, the traveler's preferences in terms of uh, origin destination, immediately in, in a month, 200 new jobs developed because a lot of people, a lot of enterprises create applications in order to provide services, IT services, application services, to provide some services to that clients that have different they have, they have, let's say, different um, that services that don't, didn't have in the past. So out of the blue, just with the data use, 200 jobs developed because of the use of the data provided services on that one. An example of that type of data to give you another example, it will be, for instance, for the travelers that come from China to know where to find in a large terminal in the US, in um, whatever airport in the US, in O'Hara, in uh, Chicago, for instance, that is a large, a very complicated terminal with different, different buildings, to find in that buildings uh, products or services that the client from China that come from first time in the US is easy to find. In other words, to, mop, to mapping all the activities that take in the, in, uh, in the terminals to a mobile and uh, a in different languages, so that means that all the clients have more access to more products, to more services, so they generate revenues for both parties. And so I can tell you a variety, a huge variety of uh, different um, applications and services that can give it because of use of data. Uh, smart city, it's also something that is speak about integration, where, while here we, we speak about integration with also other activities taking place in the city.
for instance, administration, for instance, uh, hospitality and uh, uh, accommodation, entertainments, events, all this information, all this system integration, providing uh, new services and providing guidance to the visitors, providing guidance to the locals, providing guidance about the efficient time in order to move inside the city or to, to, to visit a place or to have, let's say, to find a good restaurant or to find a good place or the right place to go there and to have a smart way to find the, the, the right approach, the, the quicker approach, the cheaper approach in order to reach that uh, space or to reach that service. I can, we can speak a lot about that concept. You understand that is a concept that taken by smart cities and uh, mobility as a service. It's, a, it's, it's concepts that uh, implemented uh, last decade in um, developed world. So move a lot of cities, a lot of uh, regions spend amounts of capitals in order to reach the level uh, to be smarter than the past. The same happened in the transport sector, the same happens in the uh, transport of the prices. Uh, more questions if you wish at the end of the presentations, but here is the concept that when we speak about performance, the, the, the question is how we use data management, what is the level of use of uh, Internet of Things and technology, and how integrated it will be with the other systems and with the other carriers, and of course, what is the spillover like this? What effects? What are the effects in the business ecosystem and how the company take that effects for their benefit? So, Aristi, I think now you can move on to the next slide and start. Or Maria, 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 I think now you can explain a little more deeply the, what, what, when we speak about transport, the prices, value, what exactly it means. Maria, the floor is yours. Maria Salzataki. We don't hear you because you don't open the, your microphone. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, well, the continuous negative effect of the most uh, recent crisis, uh, combined with the influence of a number of uh, disruptive events, uh, especially due to COVID-19 pandemic, have made the strategic position of the enterprise value very, very critical for transportation and logistic companies. So. The goal of a well-crafted strategy of a transportation enterprise is to increase the added value on asset, the market, the added value on asset, um, thus the financial metric uh, based on the residual wealth of tangible and non-tangible assets, the market value on depth, uh, the market price. Uh, so, who, of what, of how is the willing, uh, how one is willing to pay in order to to invest in a companies and enterprises market value and is measured by ratios such as equity value to EBIT, equity value to EBIT and equity value to revenues. And finally, in order to improve the market value on equity, also known as market capitalization, uh, thus the total uh, do dollar or uh, euro value of a transport company equity and is measured by ratios such as price to profit, uh, price to book value, price to shares, and price to cash flow. So we can move to next slide. In capital intensive businesses and enterprises such as transportation enterprises and logistics, the foundational principle for success is first of all to meet all the different stakeholders' expectations, such as carriers, infrastructure operators, traffic management providers, and authorities. The key challenge for management of transport enterprises, and especially of strategic management of transport enterprises, is to improve connectivity, to, to, to improve innovation, such as cost control, data use, to improve uh, digitalization and digital transformation, and uh, improve value added, especially in the terms of socioeconomic effect in the region or nation catchment area of each transport enterprise. Another foundational principle for success is to meet investment and project financing goals, improving strategies such as concession projects, 
Uh, the management is responsible for attracting investors, improve market growth and meet all the national and regional goals by improving and meeting the challenges of uh, uh, guarantee that all the regulation and new terms uh, and new term regulations are met uh, to guarantee the condition of contracts, work for capacity, reg all the regulation and governance uh, versus financing ownership schemes issues. So we can move on to next. Thank you. So another foundational principle of the capital intensive business and transport enterprises and of the strategic management of transport enterprises is to use the appropriate tools that influence demand uh, by improving um, all the regional conditions by considering all the regional conditions and demand partners in order to meet the pricing policy issues and targets by using the cost control safety and security um, tools and uh, improving of course marketing and, and promotion finally a crucial foundational principle for success is of course the business development in order to design and implement strategies to build the market all the managers of transportation and logistic businesses and enterprises should ensure that their strategies meet the goals of improving operation efficiency, improving profitability and increasing revenues, all, stream, all revenue streams, and improving cash flow and availability by using all the available tools such as loss of a lot of service and uh, the appropriate, of course, financing tools and governance structures. Finally, in order to design to implement the strategies to beat the market and to be competitive in uh, order to um, to improve your strategic positioning, very very that is very critical for all the capital intensive uh, transport uh, enterprises, is to guarantee the risk sharing business control and by using a system of system approach in order to design and implement all the strategies to be competitive for the market industry and the management of transportation and logistic businesses businesses should ensure that their strategies incorporate all the above ingredients and uh, foundational principles that we analyzed previously thank you very much we can move to Next, Mrs. Dr. Karaguni. Thank you very much, uh, professors. Uh, so, uh, as uh, professors mentioned uh, above, this uh, identification of all uh, different stakeholders and stakeholder groups is uh, principally based on the, the understanding that uh, transport uh, enterprises at strategic position in uh, its regional business ecosystem. So development uh, directions are the, the strategic options, let's say, that enterprise uh, face or should face, considering the strategic and its strategic capabilities. And of course, the, the expectations, the different expectations of all stakeholders and stakeholder groups. So transport policy, uh, planning, and of course, uh, operational issues exist with, um, with a uh, hierarchy. Of, uh, of objectives, which are split into four uh, main categories, strategy planning, uh, competitiveness, and of course, uh, innovation. So each of um, this uh, dimension is based on principles that affect mostly the strategic, let's say, planning process, and of course, uh, the management of, uh, of an enterprise. So strategy and market development, we could say that are based on uh, regulation and uh, protection, on funding, and on, of course, socioeconomic impact that we will discuss later on this uh, presentation. Uh, the competitiveness dimension, we could say that is forced by the regulatory framework, uh, the exposure to, to competition and uh, in, in the product market, and of course, the improvement in management performance and uh, we know that we are in a digital era in a new digital era as professor dimitri mentioned so innovation is driven by uh, artificial intelligence by new products and services and of course uh, uh, intelligent transport systems uh, development so 
for all these four uh, principal uh, directions, uh, let's say, all these are linked to the enterprise performance and, of course, its contribution to the regional business ecosystem. Thus, uh, we could say that the business resilience of uh, the enterprise is linked with uh, uh, more social issues, with the social development and, of course, the passengers' uh, uh, service quality improvement. Um, the operational efficiency is mostly linked with uh, the economic growth and uh, uh, service uh, quality improvement. The economic productivity improvement is mostly linked with uh, economic growth goals and uh, uh, the infrastructure quality uh, uh, management. And uh, of course, uh, stability is linked with more uh, social goals and uh, um, and, uh, and uh, perspectives of uh, infrastructure quality improvement. So for this, uh, uh, for the service quality direction, the, 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 base, uh, the basic perspective is innovation improvement. For the economic growth goals, uh, the contribution to, to the economy, the economic uh, contribution. For social goals, the human development perspective. And of course, for the infrastructure quality um, is the infrastructure value added perspective that. Um, uh, Professor uh, Sajetaki mentioned before. So the development of uh, an integrated methodological framework that could support all stakeholders in the decision-making process in order to manage and, and transport uh, enterprise uh, towards uh, economic development is very, very crucial. And uh, is leading to, to the need of uh, a very flexible methodological framework in order to support decision makers and all uh, stakeholder groups. And by analyzing all the, the related, let's say, factors that uh, affect transport uh, uh, enterprise uh, performance, decision makers and stakeholders should, first of all, uh, address in a coherent and more integrated way the problem of uh, enterprise strategy planning. And, uh, and management towards economic development. So the development of uh, the performance assessment framework of uh, enterprises and mostly of transport uh, enterprises is based on um, an integrated approach which, uh, while considering the external socioeconomic environment interaction with, um, uh, with the, the enterprise for all uh, stakeholder groups. So the key question arising for stakeholders, for major stakeholders in strategic planning and decision making process in terms of uh, large transport uh, infrastructure um, are related mostly to what is uh, the region economic base, uh, how many jobs will be gained, in, uh, in other words, how much uh, total output would be gained for uh, for stakeholders and, and shareholders, and uh, of course the, the society as a whole. So, a key part of uh, the strategic planning process is related to uh, the estimation of uh, these ripple effects across uh, the regional economic system. So, uh, the the quantification, let's say, of uh, of employment and uh, income impact is um, as part of. Uh, uh, the analysis that have been done are uh, basically calculated through economic impact analysis. Economic impact analysis usually employs uh, one of two methods for determining um, impacts. The first one is uh, the input-output model for analyzing the regional uh, uh, the regional uh, economy. Let's say uh, this model rely mostly on uh, inter-industry uh, data to determine how effects in one industry will impact um, other sectors or other uh, industries. And based on this data, um, multipliers are calculated and used to estimate uh, uh, basic economic impacts. Uh, another very well-known method used for economic impact analysis are uh, econometric uh, simulation models. These are more uh, complex, let's say, econometric and um, general equilibrium models. Um, these models account for uh, everything uh, the same that uh, the input-output model does, plus 
uh, they forecast, they could forecast the impact caused by uh, future economic uh, changes or uh, price changes or uh, demographic uh, changes in the region. So there is a large amount of, uh, of literature, of course, uh, regarding economic effects, especially of uh, transport and air uh, transport on, uh, on the economy. For example, uh, the Transportation Research Board there in US uh, identified three uh, different principal methods used to determine the economic impact of, uh, of an airport. The input-output method that I mentioned before, uh, collection of uh, benefits uh, method, and of course, the catalytic method. It, uh, Transportation Research Board also claims that uh, of these methods, the most uh, prevalent is the input-output method, which typically, as I said before, measures the sum of uh, direct, indirect, and induced uh, economic impacts. So, uh, let's say, uh, multiplier um, effects. So, excuse me. So, um, let's uh, uh, see and highlight the key functions of uh, direct, indirect, uh, and, and uh, induced economic effects uh, about uh, uh, mainly the tra their transport uh, sector and business ecosystem. So, the uh, direct contribution of, of the aviation sector in uh, the national economy is measured by the direct contribution to employment. Uh, that is uh, the jobs that are created and the contribution to GDP, that is uh, the income uh, generated. So uh, the direct contribution to employment is uh, quantified as the total number of jobs created in the aviation sector because of the regional transport activity and the regional aviation activity deals with um, air carriers and uh, airport operators, deals with um, aircraft uh, maintenance, with uh, air traffic control uh, uh, activities, and of course activities that are directly serving um, air passengers such as uh, the check-in, uh, baggage handling, security services, uh, on-site retail and uh, catering, and these jobs, let's say, um, represent the jobs in aviation primary firms and uh, are serving uh, the region under uh, investigation because we are uh, discussing about uh, uh, effects and impacts on, on the region. So um, the direct components of the aviation sector uh, analytically could be include uh, aviation carriers that serving the uh, the, region, the, the region, this could be scheduled and non-scheduled uh, carriers, um, would concern the ground-based uh, infrastructure uh, and services, uh, the airport operators, uh, security services, restaurant, airports, hotel, and uh, all these, uh, these activities. And uh, of course, uh, airspace uh, uh, manufacturing. So, on the other hand, the indirect contribution to uh, employment is uh, mostly qualified, quantified as the total number of jobs in the region that support the air transport activity, uh, which could include uh, the suppliers to transport, for example, jobs that are uh, linked to, to aviation fuel uh, suppliers, uh, construction companies, uh, facilities management, and uh, um, etc. And this um, uh, in other words, these activities exist just because of the aviation business in the region. Uh, so uh, the aviation suppliers firms could uh, concern uh, air transport business suppliers, ground-based uh, infrastructures and uh, services, air traffic controllers, uh, aircraft uh, apron services, uh, etc. Uh, then we have the induced effects that are referred to the employment and uh, income generated from the um, the expenditures, the, the consumption and investments of uh, direct and indirect employees. So in use contribution um, concerns the secondary, let's say, impacts to the economy uh, and uh, and impacts are, uh, these impacts are circulated supporting industries uh, through uh, multiplier effects. And finally, we have uh, the catalytic effects that um, 
concerns the extent to which air transport contributes to a national or regional economy um, beyond any effects that are directly or, or indirectly associated with uh, the air transport industry. So for air, for air transport, for, for example, for our example, there are many and very different sources of catalytic econom or economic impact um, covering in most cases uh, activities related to tourism and, um, and trade. So, uh, we'll give you some, uh, some info about uh, an application of, uh, of these methods in Greece. Greece have been selected for providing you an application of the modeling for mainly two uh, reasons. Uh, first of all, because Greek economy, as you know, is heavily dependent on um, the tourism sector. And uh, the second one is because it was uh, so long uh, term suffering from uh, uh, financial stress, especially up to uh, 2018. So when it comes to aviation's economic impact on uh, Greece, both in terms of jobs generated and its contribution to the national GDP, we notice that, uh, for example, our local airlines uh, directly employ almost uh, 5,000 people. This uh, were um, uh, data for 2013. This was the analysis base year. And uh, uh, through the supplies, uh, a further 1.5 thousand jobs are generated. So uh, about uh, 6,000 jobs are created to other sectors of, uh, of the economy which represent the induced effects of the local air carriers, as uh, I analyzed before. And it's uh, noteworthy that uh, the carriers that are not based on Greek airports uh, present a very limited contribution in terms of direct and indirect uh, effects. So in terms of, air of um, airports, the induced effect is uh, estimated to overreach the level of uh, direct created uh, jobs and uh, that is an evidence that airports act as a job creator and income generated a generator in a local scale in, uh, in Greece. Uh, we can highlight that uh, the airport's contribution in the local economy is more than six times higher than the contribution of, uh, of air carriers and not including in that the jobs that have been generated in the ground infrastructure construction uh, period uh, providing much more evidence of the critical role of, uh, of airports in regional economic development. And uh, of course, in terms of uh, aerospace uh, manufacturers, uh, they present a lower contribution uh, by 1.8, almost by 1.8 direct uh, employees and uh, 2.6 thousand direct induced uh, jobs. And this is mainly because the aircraft manufacturing industry is not uh, essential in national level in Greece, and uh, most of the equipment and uh, maintenance supplies um, are imported uh, from abroad. But while it's a lower income contribution, the aerospace contribution in aviation business is essential, uh, mostly in terms of uh, safety and traffic control in Greece. So, by taking a quick uh, look in uh, the overall uh, picture, we noticed that aviation, aviation's contribution in Greece is being uh, translating to uh, the overall generation of uh, uh, 378,000 jobs, which is almost 10% of the overall employment of, uh, in the country. And uh, its impact in terms of uh, GDP contribution accounts for almost 12% of uh, the national GDP. So uh, this were the figures back in 2015, where Greek economy was in a deep recession. So you can imagine the volume of this picture in a, um, in a period of, uh, let's say, economic normality. And uh, I have to highlight that Greece also gained a, a high share of uh, in the Mediterranean, mostly summer holiday tourism in, in the region by attracting uh, close to 2022 20, uh, million international tourist arrivals back in uh, 2014. 
uh, which is uh, five more millions than uh, the previous year. So the catalytic effects in 2014 were significant. Uh, increased, reaching the level of uh, almost uh, 10,000 million, and uh, the total contribution of, uh, of uh, aviation were close to uh, 12.5 billion, representing the uh, almost 13 percent of of the national GDP. Uh, so, uh, when the Greek economic crisis started to affect national business back in 27, with a peak in 2010. Um, Air transport contribution presents uh, the lower uh, value uh, these years, mainly because of the of the downturn of, of the tourist industry. And the, uh, we could uh, notice that uh, the air transport contribution these years uh, provided equal to pre-crisis values uh, back in 2013 and 2014, which is a strong evidence that the uh, Greek economy was in recovery process, mainly because of the high uh, tourism volumes. So uh, by investigating the uh, linkage, let's say, sectors of, uh, of the average uh, annual estimated macroeconomic effects, uh, mostly associated with, uh, with air transport, we highlight those economic sectors that are mainly benefit from air transport industry. And we can see that these uh, sectors are uh, wholesale trade, transportation, accommodation and food services. And we notice that uh, the economic sector with the highest uh, multiplier is associated with tourist uh, services. Uh, also, it is uh, useful and not worth it to take a look at uh, air connectivity data for Greece. And uh, this is uh, the level to which an airport is connected to the rest of the world, either by direct flights or indirect flights, uh, the other airports as a share of uh, national GDP in European countries. So we notice that uh, countries marked with uh, red, which are most Mediterranean tourist uh, countries, present the highest scores of, uh, of air connectivity. So uh, air connectivity is highly supported by tourist flows, so we understand how uh, how these economies are uh, boosted by uh, by tourism and uh, and tourism volumes. Okay, now we are going to take a look, a quick look at three relevant case studies uh, to define uh, these multipliers in terms of both employment as the job generated and in terms of uh, GDP. Uh, first of all, let's take a look to uh, two key Mediterranean countries, uh, Spain and uh, Italy. So we noticed that in Italy, for, for example, while the direct and direct and induced effects of air transport account for 1% of uh, the country's uh, GDP, this percentage rises to 2.5% when it comes to the sector's catalytic, uh, catalytic effects on uh, Italian economy. So, uh, the case you can see that is the same for uh, for Spain, driven by the fact that uh, these countries are countries highly dependent on uh, on tourism. Uh, you can see that the picture becomes uh, much bigger when it comes to remote tourist uh, islands in the Mediterranean, such as Cyprus and Malta, uh, where why in these cases the size of the economy is much smaller their transport uh, effects uh, on it are much, much higher. So the catalytic effects are uh, almost 4% of um, GDP in Malta and 7% of GDP in Cyprus. So we can understand by this that uh, uh, air transport in this case is, is a great, a huge contributor to, to the national economy. And uh, uh, this picture also remains the same when it comes to remote uh, tourist destinations like Greece or Portugal. We, um, in particular, when it comes to Greece, we notice that uh, their transport uh, direct and direct and induced effects are almost 2% of, uh, of national GDP when uh, its catalytic effects rise to 5.5% uh, of, um, of Greek uh, GDP. And uh, finally, 
uh, I would like to, to notice that we estimate the welfare impact per transport infrastructure in Greece as the impact in terms of the country's health provision and its, uh, also its education level. We notice that the, uh, the transport infrastructure scores are lower than uh, the EU uh, relevant ones, but uh, much higher th than both the national and regional scores. So uh, air transport infrastructure development boosts not only the regional and national economy in, uh, in Greece, but it also uh, has a high uh, impact on um, uh, the welfare in terms of both education and of course, uh, health uh, provision levels. Uh, so uh, a quick part of, uh, of uh, conclusions. Firstly, we had to answer uh, the main question, why to estimate an impact on regional or national economy? Because in this case, we could estimate the overall contribution of, uh, air tra of transport infrastructures in an economic system. And of course, the economic impact on, uh, on other sectors too. We can provide essential economic and, of course, uh, uh, social outputs for a variety of stakeholders or uh, stakeholders groups involved in a decision-making process. These stakeholders could be authorities, NGOs, or governmental uh, bodies, financial bodies, uh, etc. And of course, uh, we monitor uh, the productivity and the efficiency of, uh, of fair transport in, uh, in local economies. Uh, then we, we talked about the significance of uh, transport industry impacts in a national and local uh, uh, level, economic level. We noticed that um, there are high impacts of, on both unemployment and business growth. Uh, there is an impact multiplier of almost four during the construction period of the transport infrastructure and almost uh, a multiplier about two during the operation period. And we also noticed that the transport uh, industry um, act as a, uh, a foreign direct uh, investment by providing additional impact to the poorest uh, region of, uh, of the country. And uh, of course, um, its contribution to, to the GDP is also uh, very high. Moreover, uh, we noticed that uh, there are several methodologies in the literature for estimating a, a transport tent, especially air transport, social impacts in national and regional uh, economy. The input output approach is the most effective in terms of income and jobs, and jobs uh, created. Uh, the gross value added method in terms of uh, social values, and it has a great need of, uh, uh, of uh, accurate uh, data and of course inputs on uh, on data mining or data mining concepts in terms of uh, income uh, gender uh, skills uh, education and uh, etc and finally we saw that uh, the estimation of fair transport um, social impacts in national or regional scale is very significant for being able to compare with other uh, business sectors in order to support uh, all stakeholders, uh, groups in, involved in the decision-making process, um, monitoring the productivity and efficiency of uh, air transport in, uh, in most economies. And of course, in order to estimate that we, uh, we notice the sector's contribution on, uh, uh, on overall um, welfare in a regional or, or a national level. So we uh, provide you with some selected uh, publications of our research team that have been conducted on, um, in 2022, just to give you uh, some more info about our research work in, uh, in the field. Of course, you can contact us for any additional uh, information. And uh, I don't know if uh, Professor Dimitri wants to say a few words about our forthcoming uh, research and professional activities. Yes. Also, we organize an international conference regarding intermodal transports, and uh, we investigate a new airport that uh, taken place in Crete, that is a very popular tourist destination in the Mediterranean. And this total, a greenfield project means that a totally new airport developed. 
and uh, we will see the difference between uh, today and we estimate uh, the, the impact in the future. So please don't uh, hesitate to participate if you want. And also we have a summer school for manager, managers in, in, the, in uh, for transport enterprises. It takes place in uh, July in Alexandropolis in Greece. Uh, for persons so that they are willing to see the material or to have access to the material, don't hesitate through the team of uh, Professor Kaiser to contact us in order to provide them access, even that they are remote. And for people that are uh, available to come are more than welcome. And of course, uh, the people that come from uh, the suggestion of the team of, uh, of Professor Kaiser, no fees included in, our, in their participation. Thank you very much. Dimitri. Zoitza, uh, let's see if we have any, any, any questions on the chat or any questions uh, from the audience. Um, I cannot see any question in the chat box, but uh, from the audience, if you, you have any question, you can ask. I know that is a very compact and coherent information that you receive through that slides. I know that uh, maybe a lot of questions generated when you read the slides and review it a little bit, uh, all the material that included there. I understand that there is a lot of experience and a lot of research behind that, and sometimes needs some time to review it, all that uh, information that you received today. Uh, please don't hesitate to contact us. We have a strong collaboration with the FMRI team and also Professor Kaiser and all the team there in order to support uh, any question that you find interesting. And uh, also don't forget that when we make a planning approach, when we plan something in transportation system, transportation systems are networks. That means that the impacts is through the whole chain. And uh, the, the estimation and the, the analysis of the uh, value in value chain, the impact of the value chain is critical for the decision making uh, approach. And also, don't hesitate that we are in the digital era where data are a revenue generator for that enterprises. And uh, all the applications and all, let's say, the, the, the efforts by the transport enterprises are to gain, to, to gain the benefits from this digital era. And uh, there is an area also for improvement. And uh, behind that, uh, you can find a lot of opportunities in, uh, in order to uh, develop even their own application if you have a smart idea, because that time, that era, is the appropriate in order to for new uh, and for new um, let's say ideas and uh, startup. Um, thoughts or companies, even companies, in order to, to take benefits, in order to, to be involved in the chain of transport. Dr. Dimitrio, thank you for, you know, uh, uh, this presentation. I, I know for sure that Wednesday that we have a class, uh, a few students that I saw right now, they can have some questions. Uh, the time has passed, uh, so uh, I'm going to ask the audience another time if they, if they have any question. So, Zoitza, you can wrap it up, the webinar. Looks like that we don't have any question. Thank you, everyone, for joining, and also I'm thank sorry, you, Dr. Dimitrio. I'm sorry. Uh, also, Dr. Dimitrio, I would like to let you know that we have uh, today we have international uh, group of the national students. We have uh, people from academia. Also, we have from people from the local DOT, Liban on Transportation. That is uh, very impressive. And uh, Tezoitza is going to uh, forward this presentation to US DOT that they are going to. They are going to post it on their website. So, Zoe, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you, everyone, for joining today. Also, I'd like to thank Dr. Dimitrio and his research team for presenting today. And I think we are going to have another web webinar with you on April 19th. So, we are looking forward to it.
Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank, thank you all. You all Mr. Barai. Thank you, Dr. Mitty, with his team. Thank you. See you. Bye.